For newcomers, the fixed gear world can seem like a very niche, enigmatic, and at times an unwelcoming place to be. But in reality, a lot of us fixed gear riders are just really cool people, just with a few peculiarities. <laughs> Here are 10 unspoken rules of fixed gear cycling so you can be on your merry way to making some dope ass friends in the fixed gear scene and be on the path to becoming a bona fide fixed gear rider yourself. Number 10. Every fixed gear rider needs to know how to skid. It is one of the basic foundations of fixed gear riding on the street and it shows that you have enough control over your bike to safely ride it. Especially if you're riding brakeless, it is a 100% must have, but even if you're just running a front brake, back pedaling is essentially your rear brake. And being able to lock your rear wheel in time could very well save your life in a hairy situation. My friend Hal is the owner of Faith Gear in Taipei, and he says that regardless if somebody is going to buy a bike from him or not, if they try out one of his fixed gears, he teaches them how to skid before they leave the shop. If you want a more in-depth guide, check out this one that I made on how to skid after you're done watching this video. Other fixed gear riders will also see your bike as improperly built if you don't have a proper gear ratio and a decent amount of skid patches. There is a general consensus of a range of gear ratios where you shouldn't really go above or below. Your gear ratio should be able to get you up the steepest hills you ride while still maintaining a balance of being able to go reasonably fast on flats. And at the very least, you should have a ratio that allows you to keep up in a group ride. Along with that, you should also have a gear ratio that gives you a decent amount of skid patches so you're not burning through your tire really quickly. A very common gear ratio that I see on a lot of your bikes and bike checks that you send into the channel is 48 16 and this is probably one of the worst gear ratios that you could be running because it only gives you three skid patches Skid patches are the point on the tire that is in contact with the ground when you're performing a skid or when you're backpedaling as a general rule of thumb in order to give you more skid patches Try to avoid gear ratios that are evenly divisible. So have a decent number of skid patches so you're not needlessly burning through tires and through your wallet. Speaking of unspoken rules, there's a few unspoken rules that you need to follow if you want to be successful on YouTube. Luckily, this portion of the video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're wondering how you can use your unique passions to build a successful and fulfilling career, but you don't know where to start, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to structure your time. Ask any YouTuber and we'll all tell you the same thing. Starting is the hardest part. But with MKBHD's class, he breaks down the entire process of starting a YouTube channel and making videos from start to finish. I took his entire YouTube class just as a refresher for myself, and something cool that I found out is that we have almost the exact same process for making our videos. And I really wish that MKBHD's class was available to me when I was starting out my channel six years ago so that I could have a solid roadmap to success rather than trying to figure everything out myself and breaking a few of those unspoken rules, it leading to some embarrassment and really bad videos. <laughs> the first 1,000 people to use my link at the top of the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. So if you're ready to make your first video, post it, and officially become a YouTuber, check out Skillshare linked at the top of the description. Foot retention is often seen as much better and much more fun than a rear brake. If you're running a rear brake, you might as well just be riding a single speed bike at that point. Relying on a rear brake instead of just backpedaling for your secondary or even primary form of stopping can take away a lot of that connected experience with a fixed gear. So if you're running a rear brake, just take it off. It's going to save some weight. Clean up the cabling on your bike a little bit. It'll make your bike look cooler. It'll make you look cooler. And it'll probably make you a better fix gear rider as you gain more control over your bike with your legs. To have a respectable and presentable fix here, you're also going to need 
proper chain tension. About half an inch to one inch of slack in the chain when you pull up and when you pull down on it is a nice balance of keeping the chain tight enough so it doesn't fall off and tight enough to feel responsive when you pedal the bike while also being loose enough so that you're not binding the gears and unnecessarily wearing them down. So keep your fix your chain nice and limber to strike that balance between responsiveness, efficiency, and longevity. And on top of that, you'll look much more in the know and respectable out on group rides. Keep your chain clean. Fix your bikes are incredibly low maintenance, but that doesn't mean that they are zero maintenance. One of the two things that you need to do to regularly maintain your fix gear is to keep your drivetrain clean. The most fun thing for the vast majority of fixed gear riders is the connected feeling with the drivetrain. And if your drivetrain is gunky and dirty, it won't feel as buttery smooth to pedal and it won't be as fun. And on top of that, you're going to wear your drivetrain components down much more quickly than you need to. If you want to be quick about it, cleaning and re-lubing your drivetrain can take as little as five minutes. Do that once every 100 to 200 miles and your fix gear will be much more fun to ride day to day and last a lot longer. To a fix gear rider, seeing a dirty drivetrain is just flat out disgusting to us because it takes a lot of the fun out of the experience. And if you don't have enough enthusiasm for fixed gear riding to at least keep your drivetrain clean, it really makes you look like a poser. Also, whenever you're taking photos of your bike, only take it on the correct side, the right side, the drive side. Fixed gear riders love looking at other people's bikes, and one of the most fun things for us to look at is someone's drivetrain. If you take a picture of your bike on the non-drive side, the left side, we can't see any of that. When you do, it makes you look unknowledgeable and again, like you're a poser. Yeah, there's a common theme of gatekeeping in the fixed gear world. So if getting into fixed gear riding and making friends through fixed gear riding is something that you want to do, take pictures of the drive side only so that other riders can fully appreciate how dope your bike is. There's the nod between cyclists. You're riding one way, another cyclist is riding the opposite direction, and when you pass, you both look at each other and give each other the nod. Now doing the nod isn't 100% necessary if it's just any old cyclist. It's definitely polite to do, but it's not required, especially if they're a roadie, which they probably don't see you anyway because they're too tunnel visioned on getting a KOM. But if you meet eyes with another cyclist as you're passing each other, definitely give them the nod. And always try to make eye contact with another fixed gear rider if you're passing each other and give them the nod. It's pretty rare to see another fixed gear rider out in the wild. So if you do come across another fixed gear rider, definitely give them the nod. And if you want to, also give them a wave. Bring your own dang lock to the group ride. Fixed gear riding is especially concentrated within city centers. So a lot of group rides will be going out to a bar, going out to a cafe, going out to a restaurant in town. Meaning, if you wanna go inside and hang out with everybody, you're gonna have to lock up your bike. Don't be that person that makes another rider lock up their bike with yours because that just makes your bike and their bike a much more valuable target for thieves. A lot of the ethos for fix gear cycling is relying on yourself. So be self-sufficient, bring your own lock so you're not getting your bike and someone else's bike stolen, and that's so that you can go inside and hang out with everybody. In the fixed gear world, carbon is 100% just for flexing. In other forms of cycling, like mountain biking or road biking, carbon is often viewed as something that is just a given. If you want to be fast, you ride carbon components on a carbon bike with carbon wheels. It makes the bike lighter, it potentially makes it more aerodynamic, and it will make you go faster marginally. <laughs> but having carbon components, aside from a carbon fork, is usually seen as a bit oxymoronic on a fixed gear. Because if you're really that concerned about performance gains, you shouldn't be riding a fixed gear at all. <laughs> People ride fixed gears because they're fun, not because they're the fastest bikes around. So if you're a fixed gear rider and you find yourself gravitating towards aero disc wheels, tri spokes, and aerodynamic seat posts, and aero bars, because you're trying to be as fast as possible on a fixed gear, you need to take a look at yourself in the mirror and say this with me. I 
Amarodi. Don't get me wrong, it's fine to like all those exotic carbon components, but in the fixed gear world, you like it because you think it's cool, that coolness brings you joy on your bike, and you want to show off a little bit. And to be fully assimilated into the fixed gear scene, there are a few things that you must watch. That is, at least one MASH SF movie, the Macaframa movie, and Premium Rush. MASH and Macaframa movies are great to watch some dope riding and to get some inspiration and to see what you can do on a fixed gear, and Premium Rush is great to get in the know of fixed gear memes. <laughs> no joke, I absolutely love Premium Rush, but I probably love it for the wrong reasons. <laughs> a hell of a lot of fixed gear riders have seen these three movies, and if you can appreciate them and reference them, then it puts you way deeper into the fixed gear world. And if you want some supplemental fixed gear content that is current, you should definitely subscribe to Zach Gallardo because if you've watched to this point in the video, you obviously like this video. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can watch more fixed gear videos just like this one. Subscribing is totally free and you can unsubscribe at any time because according to my YouTube stats, 54% of you aren't subscribed. So be part of the cool kids club, the minority, be a super hipster and hit that subscribe button. I got a question for you all. Are there any unspoken rules of the fixed gear world that I missed? Because there are a lot of them. Let me know in the comments below. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Ryan Witt, David K, Ellie Lovelace, Justin Javier, Kelvin Aho, Julian Corona, The Fix Federation, OC Bike Crew, Stan Strong 108, Brandon Black, and Zane Kolnick for helping to make these fixed gear videos possible through the support on Patreon. And remember that life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.